So I am recording, but it's okay. You could stop me, raise your hand if you have any questions. We're going to move on to graphing quadratics that are in standard form. Quadratic means the power of two. It could be a quadratic trinomial, could be a quadratic binomial, or even just a quadratic monomial. Um, up until this point, we've only been graphing lines, and we used to use y equals mx plus b, or we used to use an xy table to graph lines. But today we're going to begin to graph parabolas. Okay. What are parabolas? They are U-shaped curves that either open up or down. Okay. Now, the most simple parabola would be the parent graph y equals x squared. And we could graph this function just like any other function by using an xy table. So everybody go down to this part of your handout and make a quick xy table right here. And let's plug in some easy numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, and notice that I put zero in the middle. I would like you to do the same. I'll do negative numbers later. But for right now, let's plug in zero. Now, when I say plug in zero, that is your X value. The X values are your inputs. And what do I do with this zero? You input it right there where zero is, where the X is at. And that would give you a zero squared. So what is zero squared? Zero times zero is zero. Okay. What if I were to input one plug in one right there what's one squared one so when you plug in a one the input one gives you the output one you know what let's graph both of these the zero zero is right there dead center one one that'd be from the origin one on the x one on the y that'd be right there so it kind of looks like a diagonal line but when i plug in two what happens what's two squared is four, right? So two times itself, that'll give you a four. And notice two on the X, one, two, one, two, three, four on the Y is right here. So it's definitely not a straight line. And I hope you're keeping up with me as I'm explaining this. How about plugging in three? What happens when I plug in a three right here? What's three squared? It's nine, right? So the input three gives us the output nine. So one, two, three. And then nine is going to be way up here, one off the edge of the graph, because that would be the location three, nine. So let's put a dot right there. Now, what would happen if I go and plug in a negative one? Plugging in a negative one in parentheses, what's negative one squared? What's a negative one times negative one? Positive one, right? So we put, and that, that point right there, negative one on the X, positive one on the Y is right there. And what happens if I plug in a negative two? What's that gonna give us? Negative two times itself. Positive four also, okay? So negative two on the X, positive four on the Y. And put a dot right there. And what if I plugged in a negative three? What do I get out? Positive nine, excellent. So we're gonna go negative three, positive nine, and put a dot right there. Now you're probably wondering, why did I switch from red ink to blue ink? I'll explain that in a bit. But let's first graph this parabola. So you connect the dots and put some arrows on it. The arrows mean that it continues forever. Like if I wanted to, I could have plugged in a four. What's four squared? 16. But obviously four 16 is off the graph, but if you did graph it 416, it would be perfectly going through that parabola. Make sense? You could have plugged in a five, five squared is 25, so 525, way off the graph, right? Six, 36, 10, 100, way off the graph, right? So obviously I stopped right here because it's on the 10 by 10 graph, that's good enough. Now, um, oh, I forgot, when you plug in a two, you get out a positive four, I forgot to type that in right here. So anyway, why did I do these blue instead of red? We'll answer that in a moment. But before we even answer that, I want to mention the most important point of any parabola is either the highest point or the lowest point. In this case, it would be this dot. I'm going to make it yellow. That's the lowest point of this parabola. That is called the vertex. Go ahead and write vertex right here and underline it. And that is that dot right there, the lowest point. Now, it could be the highest point. If it opens up, then it's the lowest point, it's a minimum value. If it opens down, it would be the highest point, okay? 
So in this case, the vertex is zero comma zero. Okay. So the vertex is the most important point. It's the highest or lowest point of a parabola, depending if it opens up or down. So if you look at this thing, it's going down, 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 reaches the lowest point. That's what we call the minimum. That is your vertex value. Then it goes back up. So if you were on a swing going down, reach a minimum point, and it goes back up, that'd be the vertex. If you were bungee cording, you bounce, reach the lowest point, then you bounce back up. That's the vertex, the minimum value. Okay. If you were to throw anything up in the air, okay, if you take your pencil and throw it up in the air, it would go up, reach a maximum point, and then go back down. And that would be a parabola opening down. That means that your vertex would be right there as a maximum value. Make sense? Okay, so the vertex is the most important point. It's either the highest point or the lowest point of any parabola. Okay, let's go back over here. Um, through any vertex, whenever you find that most important point, the highest or lowest point, you could draw a vertical line right through it. I want to do a green dotted line that goes right through the vertex. Do me a favor, do it also. If you don't have a green color, just go ahead and do it with your regular pencil. Do a dotted line right through the vertex. And up here, let's write down the, the vocab phrase, axis of symmetry. That green dotted line, I'm always going to draw it uh, as a green dotted line. That's called the axis symmetry. What is the axis symmetry? It's the line, the vertical line that passes right through the vertex. So if your vertex would be over here, the axis symmetry would be crossing right through it. If the vertex would be up here, then the axis symmetry would be crossing right through it. In order to get a vertical line, I hope we remember from graphing lines, for it to be a vertical line, it has to be x equals a certain number. Okay? And what is the axis symmetry going to be? It's going to be x equals whatever the vertex x value is. So in this case, x equals 0. That would be the axis symmetry. Okay. So very important stuff that you understand that the vertex is the most important point. It's either the highest point or the lowest point of your parabola. And through any vertex, you could do a dotted line and call that dotted line, the vertical dotted line through the vertex. That's called the axis symmetry. And it's always going to be x equals whatever the x value is of your vertex. Okay. Now, this is the easiest parabola there is. There's going to be more challenging parabolas. But before uh, we go to more challenging parabolas, let's go review the words again. Vertex is the co it's a coordinate. It's an x value and a y value. It's either the highest point or the lowest point of your parabola, depending on whether it opens up or down. Now, here's a very important factor here, three stars. If the A value is positive, it's going to open up. If the A value is negative, it's going to open down. Okay? So the A value is simply the number that's in front of x squared. Okay? So if that A value is positive, it's going to open up. If it's negative, it's going to open down. The B value is also a number. The C value is also a number. But right now, we want to understand that if the A value is positive, it opens up. As you can see, the A value here, what's the A value here? In front of x squared, what number is right here? A 1. And that means that it opens up because it's a positive 1. Okay? Not only will the A value tell you if it opens up or down, but it also tells you if it's going to be a wider parabola or a narrower parabola. Okay? Tomorrow, we'll get more into detail of when the parabola becomes wider or when it becomes narrower. But for right now, if your A value is 1, then it'll be this exact width, okay? And we'll get to that in a little bit. So if I gave you an equation, like let's say this guy right here. It says graph, but like what if I said find the most important point, find that vertex? How are we going to do that? Well, if you don't have the, the graph, if you don't have a graph, you can't see the highest or lowest point. So you're going to have to be able to find that vertex using algebra, memorizing this formula, okay? So we're at the bottom left corner of our page. The vertex formula is x equals negative b over 2 times a. We need to memorize that, okay? Now, again, the vertex is a coordinate. It's an x value and a y value. And this formula only gives you the x it only gives you this guy right here, the x value, okay? Now, on any function, whenever you have the x value and you want the y value, all you do is plug it in, 
So for example, if I said, oh, X plus Y equals five. And if I told you X equals one, oh, plug it in and then you could figure out what Y is. One plus four is five, right? Anyway, uh, that's not the equation here, but the bottom line is to find the vertex, you're gonna use this formula, X equals negative B over two A, and that only gives you the X value. Once you have that X value, plug it into your function to find the Y value, okay? That's what it says up here on the notes. It says, remember, the vertex is actually a coordinate, which is an X, Y value. This formula will only give you the X value. You still need to plug it in to find the Y value, okay? What about the axis of symmetry? We said that that is the vertical line. That is the vertical line, and I usually draw it green and dotted. It's the vertical line that passes through the vertex of any parabola, which cuts it perfectly in half. And the formula for the axis of symmetry is the same exact formula for the x value of the vertex. Okay? So, uh, for example, what if I said, um, actually, let's go to this example right here. They want us to graph this parabola. Now, the steps are up here. Step one is to find the vertex using the, form the formula, and then you plug in the x value to solve for y. So let's all do this. Let's go to this one, and let's write down step one, vertex. And we know the vertex is a coordinate, which is an x value and a y value. And how do we find the x value of the vertex? You're going to use a formula, x equals, what's the formula? negative b over two times a. When you use the formula, please plug it in with parentheses, okay? Now, what is our a, b, and c value of this standard form quadratic trinomial equation? The a value is negative three, the b value is six, the c value is five. So what am I gonna plug in right here? Whoops, what am I gonna plug in right here? The six, okay? So I hope everybody's keeping up with me right now. And what am I going to plug in down here for my A value? Negative 3. Excellent. So this formula gives us the X value of the vertex. It gives us this first number, the X value. So what is that first number? Well, up on top, we have negative 6. And on the bottom, we have 2 times negative 3, which is also a negative 6. Now, what is negative 6 divided by negative 6? Positive 1. So we just found the x value of the vertex, positive 1. We still need the y value. So when you know that x equals positive 1, you know the x value of your vertex, now you need to plug it in to find the y. So plug it into what? Plug it into the original function. So I'm going to rewrite it y equals negative 3 parentheses squared plus 6x plus 5. But notice instead of x's, I put parentheses. Why? Because I already know that x equals 1 in this case. How do I know that? By using the vertex formula. So I'm going to plug in a 1 right there and a 1 right there. And then I'm going to do the math. You could use a calculator to get your final answer, or you could actually go 1 to the second power. What's 1 to the second power? One, what is negative three times one? Negative three. What is six times one? Six, so plus six and the plus five, I'm gonna bring it down, plus five. So I really have y equals, let me write that down again, y equals negative three plus six plus five. What is negative three plus six plus five? Y equals eight, thank you very much. Now, what does that mean, y equals 8? That's the y value of your vertex. Your vertex x value is 1. We plugged it in. We found out that the y value is 8. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most important point, the vertex. The vertex is 1, 8. By the way, on the first quiz that we have on this section, I'm going to give you a function, and I'm going to tell you, find the vertex. And you got you to do it by using the formula, getting the x value, and then plugging in that x value to find the y value. And then you type in one comma eight, that's the vertex. So that's the most important point. And you start with the most important point. Let's actually graph this most important point, one eight. 
So one on the X, eight on the Y. One on the X, eight on the Y, that's up here. Again, one on the X, eight on the Y, it's right there. Second step, after finding the vertex, it says up here, draw your axis of symmetry. Draw your axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry? It's the vertical line that crosses right through the vertex. I always do a green dotted line, but it's that perfect vertical line running up and down that crosses right through the vertex. That's the axis of symmetry. And that might be another question where they say, write the equation of the axis of symmetry. So they give you this and they want you to write the equation of the axis of symmetry. How do you write the equation? It's always going to be, to get a vertical line, it's always going to be x equals, and it's always going to be x equals the x value of your vertex. x equals the x value of your vertex. So in this case, x equals 1. So if they asked you, what is the axis of symmetry of this equation, you would type in x equals 1. Okay? Now, we know that this is the vertex, the most important point. We now have an axis of symmetry, and we now need more points. So if you look up here, it says plug in two numbers on the same side of the axis of symmetry and reflect them over to the other side. So we need more points. That's a reality. And how do we find more points? By doing an XY table. So which numbers could I plug in? What's an easy number to plug in? Zero is absolutely the easiest, especially if you have a quadratic trinomial. That's in standard form, because if you plug a zero there and a zero there, everything becomes zero except the C value. The C value is your answer, right? Zero squared is zero. Negative three times zero is zero. Six times zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus five is five. So that's a coordinate right there, zero, five. Let's graph it. Zero on the X. One, two, three, four, five. Put a dot right there. Now, whenever you have a dot and you put it on the graph, if you know your axis of symmetry, then you could reflect it over to the other side. As a matter of fact, that's what symmetry actually means. Symmetrical means that it, it's like a reflection on the other side. So notice that this red dot is one unit away from that green line. So go one unit this way, and you could reflect the red dot to the other side of the axis of symmetry. That way it saves you time, right? Like over here, we actually typed in, or we actually did, plugged in a one, got out of one, plugged in a two, got out of four, plugged in a three, got out of nine, plugged in a zero, got out of zero, plugged in a negative one, got out of one. We didn't have to do these blue ones because we could have just reflected them over to the other side. Does that make sense? So this red dot that was three units away is three units away this, that, this way, and I reflected it over as a blue dot. So the axis of symmetry is definitely amazing because whenever you have one point, you could reflect it over to the other side, okay? So you need more points to plug in. What would be a good value to plug in? What other numbers could we plug in? One would not be a good one. You know why? Because we already did it. We already plugged in a one, and what do we get out? We plugged in a one, got out an eight, okay? Now, we could put a two, but I already know my answer is gonna be five. What? You're thinking, how, what? How did I do that? It's not that, I, that I'm smart and I did all this math in my head, but the reality is, you see this red dot? When I reflect it over from the origin, that blue dot is the location two on the X, one, two, three, four, five. So if that's a dot, which it is, that means that the answer, the input two gives me the output five. So if you did plug in a two right there and squared it, multiplied it by negative three, plug in a two right there, uh, and you did add five at the very end, that would give you the output of five. So that's why the instructions say plug in values that are on the same side of the axis of symmetry. So if you plugged in zero and got out of five, you might as well plug in a negative one and see what you get out. And I want to show that work right here on the side. Plug in negative one. All right, so let me rewrite my equation. My equation reads y equals negative 3 parentheses squared plus 6 parentheses plus 5 and go ahead and plug in that negative 1 right there and right there and then you could actually do the math negative 1 squared is positive 1 and you have a negative 3 times a positive 1 that'll give you a negative 3 
And then right here, six times negative one or positive six times negative one, that'd be a negative six. And then bring down that plus five. And now just do the math right here. What is negative three minus six? Negative nine. What is negative nine plus five? Negative four. So y equals negative four. So for my input of negative one, I get an output of negative four. When I plug in the x values of negative one, I get out a y value of negative four. So the input negative one gives me the output negative four. And that is a coordinate that I could graph. Let's go to the location negative one on the x, negative one, two, three, four on the y and put a dot right there. And of course, whenever you have a dot, you could reflect it over to the other side of the axis of symmetry. You see how it's two units away? Go ahead and go two units this way and put a dot right there. And we're done. We have a parabola. Kind of crooked. Sorry. Anyway, there's our parabola. Once again, let me reiterate what we did. Step one, find the vertex. That's the most important point. How do you do that? You use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. You're actually going to get a number. That x value is that number, which means that you have the x value of your vertex. Whenever you have the x value and you want the y, all you got to do is plug in the 1 into the x's, plug it into to find the y. So plug in the 1's right there, find y. Now you know your y is 8. Now you know the most important point, 1, 8. 1, 8 is right there. Second thing to do, if you read the steps, it says draw the axis symmetry, a vertical line right through that vertex. And then, of course, you need more points. So go to an XY table, plug in some numbers, reflect them over to the other side, and you'll have your parabola. Okay. Now, there is a slightly easier way of doing this where you could avoid a lot of math right here on the XY table. So let's understand this, that the A value, this A value right here, let me highlight it in red. Whatever number that is, that's going to tell you several important things of your U-shaped curve. It's going to tell you if it opens up or down. Okay, the A value tells you if it opens up or down. If it's positive, it's going to open up. It's going to be a U-shaped curve opening up. If it's negative, it's going to be opening down. Not only that, it's going to tell you if it's uh, wide or narrow, okay? The bottom line is if your A value is further away from zero, like if it, the A value is two, it gets vertically stretched, it gets narrower. If the A value is closer to zero, it gets vertically compressed, which gets wider. And we'll not worry about that today. Right now, we're just going to focus on if it opens up or down. But the A value does tell you if it's wider or narrower. So whenever your A value is one, like this parent graph that we just did, if the A value is one, it's going to be exactly this width. It's not going to be wider. It's not going to be narrower. It's going to be precisely this width right here. Do we understand that? If the A value is one, it's going to be exactly as wide as this one that we did. Okay. Now, because of that fact, if we know that the A value is one, we're going to be able to use these red dots. I want to bubble them in. We're going to be able to use those red dots, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. We're going to use it as a pattern from the vertex when A equals 1. So when A equals 1, you could use 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9 as a pattern from the vertex. So what does that mean? Wherever your vertex is at, so the vertex was right here at 0, 0. And yeah, this is the coordinate 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. But you could use a pattern, just go 1 over, 1 up, go back to the vertex 2 over, 4 up, back to the vertex 3 over, 9 up. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Super important to learn and memorize, okay? So let's actually go down here to the bottom part of our worksheet. And let's say when a equals one, use pattern one, one, two, four, three, nine. That way it'll make it a lot faster. So check this out. This bottom one right here, what's the a value here? 
the A value is one. So we just wrote down that when the A value is one, you could use a pattern one, one, two, four, three, nine. Um, the A value is one, what's the B value? Yeah, there is no B value, perfect. A value is the number in front of X squared, B is the number in front of X and there is no X and the C is the constant without any variable. So down here, it is true that the A value is one, the B value is zero and the C value is negative three. So since there is no BX term, the B value is zero. So the most important point to find is the vertex. Always start by writing down vertex, writing down a coordinate because the vertex is an X and Y value. And how do you find the vertex? You use the formula X equals negative B over two times A. So when you use that formula, please replace the B and the A with parentheses. That way you could plug in your B value and your A value. What's the B value? Zero. So plug in zero right there. What's the A value? One, plug in a one right there. So what do we have? We have a, a negative zero over two times one is two. Now what is a zero divided by two? Still zero. So the X value of our vertex is zero. The X value of our vertex is zero. Whenever you have an X and you want a Y, what do you do? You plug it in, right? So let's plug in zero. Plug it in, plug it in. All right, plug it into what? Into the original equation, y equals x squared minus three. Let me write that down. y equals x squared minus three. And we are plugging in zero into the parentheses. So when I plug in zero, what's zero squared? And what's zero take away three? Negative three. So when you plug in zero, you get out a negative three for your y value. So we just found the y value of our vertex. The y value is negative three. So we found the most important point of this parabola, zero, negative three. Let's graph it. Zero on the x, negative one, two, three on the y. Put a dot right there. Step two is to draw axes of symmetry. Which, if I ask you for the equation of the axis symmetry, it's going to be x equals the x value of your vertex. What is the x value of your vertex here? Zero. So the equation would be x equals zero, because that's the x value of your vertex. But let's actually draw it. It's going to be a green dotted line going right through that vertex. Zero comma negative three. You know what? It came out kind of crooked. So let me... Go back. There's my axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. That's x equals zero in this case. All right. After that, you need more points. You need more coordinates. So one option is to draw an input output table. But instead of going that route, we just wrote down at the bottom of our page that when your A value is one, we know it's going to be the exact width as this guy which means we could use the pattern one, one, two, four, three, nine from the vertex. Now, what does that mean? Well, we already know our vertex is right here. So from the vertex, instead of the coordinate one, one, use the pattern one over one up and put a dot right there. Okay. One, one would be right here. That means one over one up. Then you go back to the vertex. And then the next part of the pattern is two, four. So two over one, two, three, four up and put a dot right there. And then you go back to the vertex and the last part of the pattern is three, nine. So three over one, two, three, nine up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right there. And of course, you could map them over to the other side, right there right there and right there super easy and we are done we found that parabola we graphed it without even having to do an input output table all we did was use the pattern one one two four three nine now the other option would were to have been actually plug in values like if you were to plug in the number two right plug in two right there Oh, what, what is two squared, four, and then four take away three, four take away three is one. 
and that would give you the output one. So the coordinate two one, think about that right here, two one, it would be a dot right there. But you already have that dot because of the pattern as opposed to an input output table. The input output table takes way longer. It's a lot of math. There's a lot of opportunities for mistakes. So whenever your A value is one, all you got to do is uh, use the pattern one, one, two, four, three, nine from the vertex. Now, if it would have been negative one, then it would be opening down instead of up. And the only difference would be instead of going one over one up, it'd be one over one down. If the A value was negative one, it'd be two over four down. It'd be three over three over nine down, right? So the pattern really helps you a lot. Okay. So once again, to reiterate, today, we learned how to graph parabolas, quadratic functions. Step one is to find the vertex. The vertex is the most important point. Uh, the, and you find the vertex using the vertex formula, x equals negative b over 2a. Identify the b, identify the a, plug it in, find out what your x value is. Once you have that x value, plug in the x value to find the y value. That way you have your most important point, the input zero, the output negative three. You plot that point down. Second thing to do is to draw the vertical line. I do a green dotted line right through it. And then after that, come up with more points. If you want, you could use an input output table. But if your A value is one, it's better to use the pattern one over one up. And it doesn't matter if you go to the right or to the left. You could go one over one up, two over four up, three over nine up, right? So it doesn't matter if you're going left or right. The only difference is if you if your A value is negative, instead of going one over one up, you're going to be going one over one down, two over four down, three over nine down. Okay. I hope this helps. We're done.